Shonen Jump, the house of shonen manga, releases new series every year. And in this video, I'll be talking about my top 5 picks for this year. Astro Baby by Shirio Moriya is weird to say the least. The manga opens with a little boy looking at a man eating his wife. Yes, a quiet town of North Hill has been put in lockdown to prevent the spread of a mysterious virus called Cooper. This virus emerged from a meteorite that crashed in North Hill. Currently, it has influenced 1,000 to 10,000 people, but it is not a contagious disease. Also, Cooper is a pathogen with a core, which means the number of cores is the number of Coopers. So there is only a finite number of Coopers. In short, yes, there is a way for humanity to end this virus. We are following Billy, who is just 16, but still is a soldier working in the North Hill, and he's here for love. You see Ellie, a scientist who used to play with him when he was a kid and later lived with him in the same apartment for a while, is giving birth to a baby. Her ex-husband ran away after she got pregnant, so he's here to support her. They meet and go to Ellie's place to have lunch. She's working on a vaccine to kill Cooper, but currently she's on maternity leave. Because of this, the vaccine research is on hold and everyone is giving up on a cure, which obviously makes her think she should should have just aborted the baby. Billy comforts her by giving his reassurance and says he'll always be on her side. But then suddenly he proposed to Ellie? He is 16 and she is a divorced woman. <sighs> Amidst all this drama, Ellie's water broke and the baby is coming. They quickly go to a hospital, but after admitting Ellie, another meteorite falls on the town. The hospital shatters as Billy rushes to protect Ellie. She has already given birth, but the post-birth medications and treatments were not done yet. She was losing a lot of blood. As Billy tries to stop the blood leakage, Ellie bites him. Her feet hardens as she kicks him away. She has turned into a Cooper. Because of the shockwave the meteorite created, it caused a chemical reaction, forming amino acids. Billy takes out his gun, but even he knows he can't shoot Ellie. She goes in to bite Billy, but is suddenly pulled back as the baby says, I'll save you, so you save me. And the chapter ends. Yeah, the baby just spoke. It turns out Coopers are more than just some pathogens. I am enjoying the hell out of this manga. I started reading this for the video but ended up reading all the 11 chapters released at the time of recording. The unsettling setting the story revolves around, the weird and dark themes it portrays with some light-hearted comedy pinched in make it a well-balanced read throughout. I highly recommend this one. Kyokuto Necromance, written and drawn by Fusai Naba, is what I think is aiming to be the next big thing in the industry. Its plot, at least so far, is elementary and filled with action. Just give it some great animation and boom, we have our new shonen head. Karo Uno's parents are dead, so he lives alone with his grandma, Umeko Uno. One day, Umeko suddenly trips down on the floor and weird Pokemon-looking things starts to appear. Karo thinks he's just seeing things and immediately gets his grandma hospitalized. Fortunately, it wasn't anything serious and Umeko is back to normal. Continuing his school life, he notices a huge crowd outside the school's campus and it turns out that a popular novelist has come to his school specifically for him. The suspicious guy is Yoji Amane, who takes Koro on a car ride to discuss business with him. Yoji claims Koro's dad sent him here and his goal is to protect the kid and his grandma. They also talk about a ring that Koro got from his dad. These rings can summon shit. They are also called death spirits which are creatures that devour souls bringing death upon people. And guess what? The weird Pokemon looking things that showed up when his grandma tripped are actually these spirits. Karo panics and calls his grandma, but he notices her on a road crossing bridge being attacked by Shiryos. He rushes towards her and Yoji tries to stop him, but he can't, so he warns Karo to not rile up the Shiryos. But again, his smart ass decides to just go in for an attack, only to get brutally punched in the face. And now he is scared. He knows the Shiryo is going to kill him, but as he notices the spirit trying to eat grandma's soul, he locks in and summons his Shiryo from the ring. He remembers the promise he made to his dad of always protecting himself and his grandma. But the reality is that right now he's too weak and the Shiryo starts to regenerate. Eventually Yoji had to come in clutch and save the day. He explains the rings are capable of trapping Shiryos inside through a spell and shows him how to hunt a Shiryo. He chops down the Shiryo in pieces and feeds it to his Shiryo, Chitari. This is what necromancers do. We found out Koro's dad requested Yoji to protect them, but Koro thought his dad wanted him to take him 
care of his grandma on his own. So he asked Yoji to let him become a necromancer as well, as this was his way of protecting his grandma. Yeah, this is your typical box standard shonen, but over the years I've just come to accept that most shonen manga are going to follow the same cliche structure that works well for them. And that ain't all that bad. To be honest, I do sometimes want to just turn my brain off and enjoy the crazy action and hype fights. This happens to be one of those mangas, and who knows down the line it will get more interesting and deep than what it is now. Psych House by Omusuke Kobayashi is more on the wholesome side. It's kinda like a slice of life shonen. Nemurusuya is a transfer student who is late on the very first day of his new school. During the lunch break, he goes around asking people if they have heard of any supernatural occurrences like things randomly disappearing. Kotane and her friends are also asked this survey and one girl tells how food keeps disappearing off the shelves in a convenience store. Nemuru takes this lead and goes on to investigate the store where he again meets Kotune, who is struggling to buy food worth just a hundred yen. Nemuru asks her to join him in investigating these supernatural activities, but she quickly refuses and leaves without buying anything, which seems suspicious to Nemuru. We learn Kotune's mom has been hospitalized for six months now and Kotune is managing her life alone. Cutting back to the present, Kotune has escaped from Nemuru and it is revealed that she is the one who is stealing food from the store as she has the power to teleport stuff. But Nemuru immediately caught up to her and at first she tries to play it off but he says he has the powers as well and they are called Sykes. Kotone thinks she won't be caught as no one will realize what she did but Nemuru goes no and tells her the government is already aware of Sykes and they can catch her. Kotone panics even more and she starts to run away which leads to this very funny chase sequence ending with Nemuru using his Sykes which allows him to adjust the size of anything to trap her in a bucket. Kotone breaks down and opens up about her gruesome situation, how she has no money to afford food as she is in huge debt trying to pay for her mother's hospital bills. She just does not know what to do. Nemu says that the reason he was doing all this was to find more people with Sykes. It seems the government wants to research Sykes and for that, they have made a shared house accommodating all Psych users they have found and they also take care of other expenses like food, clothing, rent and all as well. Nemuru explains how through this they can eventually find a psych user who can cure Kotane's mom. He also realized how throughout her entire life Kotane had to do everything on her own and could not rely on anyone. So he wants her to rely on him and the others for help. That's his hope. The chapter ends with a glimpse of other psych users and the psych house where they will live their regular everyday lives together. I am loving this manga so far, it's just so heartwarming and wholesome. What drew me towards this was not the plot or the concept, but just the characters. They are also lovable and well written. I hope this does not get axed. Astro Royal is drawn and written by Ken Wakui. Sound familiar? Yes, cause he's the one who made Tokyo Revengers. That is why the art style and character designs are pretty much the same. Hibaru Yotsurugi deeply admires his father, Kongo Yotsurugi, cause he was a kind guy who fought for people in need and that is why everyone loved him. He motivated Hibaru to grow up and help the weak and stand up against the strong. He had a soft spot for orphans and adopted many into his family. The adopted children started pitching in with Congo's work, they became the foundation of the gang and formed a bond stronger than blood known as the Diamond Bond. We cut to the present and Congo is dead. Everyone believes that Shio Yotsurugi, the first adopted son and the family's underboss, shall take Congo's place as the boss. But in his last words, Congo enters the family's future to Hibaru the spear as the boss and a twelfth adopted son, the shield, Terasu Yotsurugi as the underboss. He gave them two pendants denoting a spear and shield respectively, symbolizing how they too can become one. So in his dad's funeral speech, Hibaru announces Terasu as the next boss of the family, which shocked everyone including Terasu cause Kongo wanted Hibaru to become the next boss. Hibaru explains how he wants to become a Yakuza and the family threw away their beliefs and became just a cold organization along the way and he's not gonna change his beliefs for anyone. So if he becomes the boss, the family is destined to split up. 
Suddenly a meteor shower starts and it is said that if you hold an item important to you and make a wish during the shower, your wish will come true. Hibaru wishes to become the strongest Yakuza ever. Then a meteor lands too close to the surface and destroys the entire city. We get this page of Hibaru floating in blank space as his pendant somehow connected him to the stars and he's granted the power of Astro. This sequence was a little weird and I didn't get what was going on to be honest. But I'm sure sure it will be explained in the future. So Hibaru finds Terasu is pinned under a building and in desperation he tries to blow up the building, punching it barehanded. Then he grabs the pendant and shouts at his dad for help. Kongo shows up in his subconscious and dictates him to turn that sincere heart into a bullet and shoot right through the building, which leads to the school sequence of Hibaru shattering this building. He saves Terasu but then fails immediately. As it's narrated, that day the world completely changed. It mark the end of peace as we knew it. Hibaru wakes up after two weeks to find out everyone now has the power of Astro, including his family who have seized control over food and essential items. Shio is now the dictator of the family as the gods chose him to have the powerful Astro. Even though I'm not a huge fan of Tokyo Revengers, especially in the later half, I still think Ken Wakui is cooking with this one. The plot is interesting and at least a little unique with good characters so far. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about this one. And that's about it for this video. Hope you found some manga to read through this video. If you did, then tell me about it in the comments. Maybe we can have a discussion down there as well. Be safe, be nice, and I'll see you guys the next time. Goodbye.